Hello everybody, this is Jack Dennis. Welcome to our fly fishing channel and welcome to a new year. Boy, if anything, I'm happy to see uh, 2020 go bye-bye. Good riddance. But we had some memorable times, a visit to Yellowstone with hardly any people, some pretty darn good fishing this summer with my grandchildren and daughter, and uh, I'm just excited to say hello 2021 and let's get to be thinking about some other fishing. going to use our standard TMC 100 dry fly hook and we'll tie this one in an olive. I generally tie some olive ones and some uh, kind of a very light amber yellow are the two colors I mostly use. I sometimes use gray ones as well, those tied with a gray body. And to start out with, we're going to tie the body on using a Antron dubbing blend. This is in kind of a light pale olive. And the Antron gives a lot of sparkle to it and, and also gives it kind of a rough buggy look which is typical of caddis flies. And we only need to go about half the length of the hook shank. That's the one thing you gotta really be careful on this particular fly is that you don't crowd the head too much because you've got to allow plenty of room tie in the wing and also the little parachute post up near the head. The first thing we're going to do now that we've put our body on is tie an underwing with Antron yarn. And I'm just going to pull one of the plies off of this yarn and tie it in right in the middle of a, I, I just used about a one inch piece of this yarn and then I'm going to fold it back and that way I'm going to reinforce it so that it doesn't pull out and also it gives it more of a little tent shape. Now we've got the underwing on there. I'm going to use my little comb and see if I can rough this up and make it look a little more buggy like and get all those strands combed out there. That looks nice and rough. And then we're going to cut this on an angle and kind of make a little tent shaped wing out of it. Well, that looks just like a caddis wing without doing anything else to it. That wing, by the way, needs to extend back about the same length as the width of the gap past the bend of the hook. Because I'm going to take this partridge skin and I'm going to pull a couple of feathers off of here. These wild birds really have excellent feathers for wings of, of dry flies. And the reason they're so good is they really hold their shape. Even when they get wet, and you can use grouse of various types, quail, even pheasant feathers, but they're all really good and they also have a very nice look to them with the mottled appearance, which most caddis have, or many caddis have. I've got two feathers here and I'm measuring them for length and tying them so that they're just laid right over top of each other with the curvature the same way. And then I'm going to clump this material together, getting as much of these fibers as I can to form kind of a tent shaped wing and lay this right over the top of the underwing here and then tie it in, in place. Make about three turns. It's really important to try to keep that wing from rolling down on the side. So now we've got our wing tied in there. And then the last thing is to put this parachute post and hackle. And for the parachute, I'm going to use some natural kip tail or calf tail. 
And you can use calf body hair, which is a little straighter and easier to work with, but it's not as full. And there's other materials you can use for a parachute. I'm not necessarily convinced you have to use calf tail, but that sure is good material for parachute flies. And, and it's, it's crinkly and very difficult, if not impossible, to stack. So what we're going to do is kind of hand stack it. I cut a clump of it out. First thing I'm going to do is hold it by the tip, take my little comb and comb out the short ends. Now I'm going to kind of hold it flat where I can just eyeball it and slide my fingers out, take the longest fibers and just pull them out and then lay them back in place. I'm going to do that about three times. And uh, that way I've got most of the hair generally about the same length. Just pick out those that are too long. And then we're going to hold it by the tip now, the wing, and come back and make one last pass with our little comb and get the shorter ones out again. And we've pretty much stacked that now so that it's about the same length all the way through. All this is going to do is, is give us some added visibility, and so don't make the wing any taller than the length of the body. In fact, I would make it a little shorter if possible. Tie the wing forward, make a couple of tight turns, and then we'll stand it up and tie in front of it. I usually do that before I trim it. And that will kind of hold it in place a little better. We got this right in front of the wing, so we have to be real careful when we cut the, the butt portion off that we don't come back and cut our caddis wing off of there. Just make sure we get all of it cut out of there. Now the next thing we got to do is make a post out of this by wrapping around the base. Just make some three or four turns, keeping the thread tight, standing it up. So there's our, our uh, post up, and now that we're going to tie in the hackle. And we only need one hackle for this parachute, and I like to use grizzly hackle for this particular fly, because it has a mottled look to it and kind of blends in. We make sure I have the right size. And we're just going to cut the web part out, strip a little base on there. And with a parachute, I like to tie the hackle on the opposite side of the wing because I'm going to wrap around it uh, counterclockwise. If this were a, a dry fly that I was going to wrap conventionally, I would tie the hackle on my side. So I tied it on the opposite side and then make a couple of tight turns to keep it from coming loose. And then we're, we're going to wrap a little bit of more dubbing to cover up the butt of the wing I just tied off there. Just real thin, just enough to cover that. And then we're, we're going to wrap parachute style about six turns. So what I'll do is start and uh, this little uh, Griffin rotary hackle plier really works well, especially on a parachute like this, because it rotates and I don't have to twist my hand every time. So we're going to wrap, and what I'm going to do is, is wrap it going up the parachute three times, and then I'll wrap back down, so I end up on the bottom. And then drop the hackle on the far side 
And that's why it's important to wrap counterclockwise because as you wrap around, when you finish it off, then it's going to hold itself tight. And when I wrap the thread now over it, it's going to just keep tightening it up. Where if it was wrapped opposite, then I'd actually be wrapping against the, the hackle. So that's really important if you're tying a parachute to wrap the same way that you're wrapping with your thread. And we're going to finish this off by tying this hackle down. Now I can hold this all back out of the way and wrap right up next to the front of the wing and then allow a little bit of room still to finish off the head. Before I allow that hackle to fall back into place, I'm going to hold it out of the way now while I whip finish the head. So now all we've got to do is come in there and cut the thread and we're We've got a really nice fly now that we can see. Even on those dark nights when those caddis are out, you can be one of the madmen that are out there fishing when it's everybody else has left the river and you still should be able to see your fly. <laughs>